morning, everyone. This is Chaitali Bagh from the European Bureau of Aviation and Defense Universe based out of Cyprus. Today, we have a special guest who has written eight varied books. He spent half of his naval 30-year-long career in the fine-growing Indian Navy in command of three ships, second in command of four ships as Staff Officer Operations Fleet Operations Officer, Director of Naval Operations in NHQ, Command Operations Officer, and finally, Director of Naval Operations and Operation Power. He has executed many operations, and today he will unveil Operation Lal Dora in 1983. Planned and almost executed for success by the Navy and Army on orders of then Prime Minister Mrs. Indira Gandhi, which saved the friendly government of Mauritius from a coup as it is no more secret as David Brewster and he have researched the operation and recently published it in an academic journal and also in his book, Warring Nuclear Navies, India, Pakistan. Welcome to ADU's chat room, sir. And now the floor is all yours. It's always a pleasure to be with the Aviation Defense Universe. And today I'm very happy that uh, you have asked me to speak about a very, very important operation called Lal Dora. Now, it is all about Mauritius. And now Mrs. Gandhi, with a real politic, saved the government of Anurid Jagunath. Now, what is Mauritius? Actually, Jagunath's son, Arvind Jagunath, is today the prime minister of Mauritius, a very friendly country to India. It's actually little, little India because uh, 422,000 Bhojpuri speaking Bihari's were transported to Mauritius in the 1800s and they went for the plantations. So today they are actually the workforce, a political force, and support the tourism. Actually, Mauritius was uh, actually colonized first by the Dutch, then the French, then the British just like India, because it is a strategic area. It has got 2.3 square kilometers of EEZ. So because of this strategic position, Mrs. Gandhi understood in 1968, when the Royal Navy left, that India will have to do a defense treaty, and we signed the defense treaty with Mauritius. That was the beginning of our friendship. So therefore, Shatali, do start the presentation as I've given you the background that the Navy and the Army was asked when there was a threat of coup. Well, importance of Mauritius is very clear to the whole world because France has the maximum EEZ in the Indian Ocean. India and Mauritius have 2.3 square kilometers and Mauritius and Seychelles share EEZ to make it five million square kilometers. So the geography and the slide will show you the importance of uh, Mauritius. There you are. The little India in the center of the Indian Ocean region, where the future is going to be decided, they say, in the 21st century. And that is why China wants to say. In 1968, the Royal Navy left the Indian Ocean. And that is when we thought that the Indian Navy would have a larger say. But budgets did not allow it. And yet we got ships which helped us in the 1971 war. Next slide. We had very good relations with Mauritius and Mrs. Gandhi realized the importance of having friendly relations with the Indian party. So when the Indian Ocean was left with a vacuum, there was a lot of facts what could be done. Mrs. Gandhi invited Anurod Jagunath because Sir Ram Gulam was the prime minister from his independence 1968 up to 1982, and elections were coming. So she called Anurad Jagunath and number two, Berenger, to come to Delhi and thought we should be friendly with this party in the elections. France and UK had interests. The Cold War was on. 
And in the Cold War, America wanted to have a say in the Indian Ocean, as it already had Diego Garcia. So there was a Cold War in this area. And in the elections, Anurad Jagunath of the Mauritian militant party, MMM, became the prime minister of Mauritius. He came to Delhi in 1983, March, for the prime minister's Commonwealth Conference. And that is when he got news. That is number two, Beringer. Next slide, please. And therefore, there was a need for supporting Prime Minister Anurad Jagunath. He was in trouble because he heard while he was in Delhi that Paul Beringer, with French and Russian interest, had played the national anthem on the radio, the original national anthem of Mauritius, which was in French, called Creole, a language between French and the local language. At that time, General S.K. Sena was the army chief acting because General Krishna Rao was in Vietnam on tour. And everybody said General S.K. Sena is the next army chief. R.N. Kao was the security advisor and Mr. Santuk was the R.A.W. There was a meeting. Mrs. Gandhi asked them and Naval Chief Admiral Taliani to prepare to go and help Anurad Jagunath not be toppled in Mauritius. The Navy had studied the Falklands War, knew the passage was long, five to eight days it could take. Ships were got ready. The INS Vikrant was in refit, but two Rana Rajput were made ready. Vindyagiri, Taragiri were made ready, and the big ship INS Mysore was made ready to call in the army. And General S.K. Sinha, a very forceful commander, ordered 54 Div, two battalions with weapons and mortars and everything, to arrive in Bombay to load on board ships. Admiral Dawson was the chief of naval staff. Admiral Taliani was the flag officer commanding in chief, Western Naval Command. I was extremely lucky to be his command operations officer, now called Chief of Staff Operations. And in secrecy, we were told to prepare with Admiral Mukherjee, who was my previous boss in the fleet, to get the ships ready to go to Mauritius, where we had the Coast Guard. And Raw had a stationed officer. The Coast Guard was Indian. We had loaned a ship to them. We had Indian officers. So we were very clear that the Indian Navy would go show of force, Anurad will be the Prime Minister and Berenger will have to give in if he doesn't want a problem on his hands. Next slide, please. While I was liaisoning with Colonel Sharma GSO-1, I think he, MMG area, he's now a retired Major General or Lieutenant General in uh, Derudun and Brigadier Bulbul Brar in DGMO, Kao alerted his raw man, and I was watching the scene from Bombay, reporting already Indian Coast Guard has been told to receive the ships, and secretly everybody was briefed. To our surprise, the 54 Div came in in one day, almost 27 hours, and I must congratulate the Indian Army we never expected they would arrive in 24 hours. And instead of going to Kolaba, they went straight into the naval dockyard. Young majors and captains were ordering their men to load because they knew the ships. They knew INS Mysore is there. They had been briefed. Mysore mein chale jana. Ye border le jana. And that sort of orders. Midnight, Colonel Sharma and I were woken up. There was mayhem in the naval dockyard. The army would not listen to the naval duty officers. That was one night I will never forget. The naval headquarters were rung up and they said we did not know that they would be arriving in one day. But General Sinha was on the phone to 54 Div that you report to me as soon as all the 54 Div has been 
actually boarded and I can report to Mrs. Gandhi. Well, I would say one upmanship. Next slide, please. And the motion of the operation was absolutely in full swing. There was a meeting in Bombay and there was meetings in Delhi. The plan had been sent and a meeting took place in the war room in what is now the Naval Operations Room in Delhi. The Raw Chief, Mr. Santuk was there. The Security Advisor, Arun Kao, was there. Vice Chief General Sinha was there. PSOs were there. And Admiral Dawson was in the chair, being the Naval War Room. Mrs. Gandhi realized it will take time, but it could be done. But there was an argument between General Sinha and Admiral Dawson because General Sinha insisted that the Army would be the force commander. The Navy insisted that the Navy would be the force commander. The same thing happened later in Off Pavan also. But at that time, Mrs. Gandhi was aghast. A agreement came that at sea, the Navy would be the commander of the task force and the Air Army would be doing the landing. But General Sena said that in 1971 in Operation Beaver, Navy did the landing and Gorkhas were killed in Cox's Bazaar. And this was all later on revealed to me by people who took part in the meaning and it is 37 years ago. Mrs. Gandhi, the way she was, walked out of the meeting. Next slide, please. She went to her office. She sent for Mr. Kao. Mr. Santuk was retiring on the 1st of April. And uh, Gary Sinner was going to take over the row. She got a plane ready. They say a lot of money was loaded into the plane. And it is history. The ships were got ready. The army and the navy was waiting for a reply from New Delhi to go. Admiral Mukherjee was ready. More tankers were getting ready besides Deepak. And there was excitement in the fleet that they were going to go like Falklands. India had come of age. Admiral Taliani made a statement that our day has come for the Indian Ocean. But unfortunately, there was silence in Bombay. Western fleet did not know whether it's coming or going. The CSO ops, Ranjit Sai and Gaurav Sharma were hanging around in the dockyard. We did not know what had happened. One day later, Operation Lal Dora was called off secretly, but word was sent to Mauritius. The ships went to sea, but were told, behave as if you're going to Mauritius. The message went to Paul Berenger. Prime Minister Anurad formed a party with Mr. Buddhu, another small party in coalition. And from that day, Mauritius remains a good friend of India, and we know the importance of Mauritius. So I hope in this short brief, you have understood, next slide, that we have to learn lessons of cooperation. The finale is very important. Mrs. Gandhi played her part. The same challenges took place in Oppavan and it's called command and control. We can keep discussing it. Of course, we formed the chief of defense staff. So there are many, many lessons that can be learned from any joint operation. I have written a book about all this with much more details. And I wonder whether uh, it has given me a little uh, sort of uh, uh, freedom to discuss while I'm in Oxford with people who got to know me. And therefore, let me tell you in finale, Lal Dora was amazing planning. The Indian Army showed how a 54 div moves. I believe they are at few hours notice. The Indian Navy showed how the ships got ready and were surprised 
that the army arrived with instructions from their commanding officer jab bombay jaoge jahaz pe jana aur kahin nahi jana and how it was all tackled by a colonel and a captain in the naval dockyard with total cooperation between the army some units of the army were sent to kolaba to take rest everything for next two days was in operational control and therefore to my mind and if you have seen this presentation operation lal dora showed how indian navy and indian navy army can cooperate and if they cooperate i think that is the answer if the three services are together india is a powerful force that is the finale of operation lal dora which gave us courage to do operation cactus by the navy in seychelles operation pavan followed and of course the cooperation of the navy with the army and the air force in the kargil war if there are any questions which have still rankled the mind i'd be very happy to answer them uh, thank you very much ranjit sir it was very interesting something which most of us don't know much about we've only heard of it we didn't know what it was till we saw that it was already out we always thought it was classified sir but uh, realizing that you have published it in a journal and uh, it is also there in your book so uh, sir are those years over sir and uh, it's it's now legal to come out in the open it is absolutely legal because david brewster is a very famous man australia began to have a lot of influence in mauritius they sent him to mauritius and when they went to mauritius they met the coast he met the coast guard officers i hope you know that mr tamini was the first raw officer who was sent to mauritius and it's no unknown secret India always appoints a helpful national security advisor to Mauritius. Yes, it's no more secret. Before the president's visit a few years ago, Hindu gave this story on the front page. It did mention the name of the researchers, and therefore, it is thirty-seven years ago. Australians came to know all about it. all i contributed was how the indian navy and the army got ready and accepted that lal dora did not take place so uh, uh, david brewster is a very famous researcher he comes to india he's written india as a pacific power so i think there's nothing to worry about the that that it is basically research by two academics with what is available in the op i still have never seen again what is written in the operations orders what were the ru rules of engagement because that all lies sealed with the fleet i was not supposed to know what the fleet will do and that is what is secret the actual operation is secret the planning was in hindu everything and rules of engagement are very important right sir thank you very much sir it was absolutely wonderful to delve into a subject which was absolutely not known and uh, i'm sure you know as and when uh, time passes and we realize that all this is no longer a great secret i'm sure a lot of things will come out which will also talk about the jointness of the three forces of the country and uh, you know how they, these joint operations can be very successful when you when you're joining them along with political uh, will of course that is always there but the three forces together have been in the era when we talk about theaterization and when we talk about joint ops i think this could be a real uh, good historical feedback to the modern day uh, you know uh, military planners of india uh, do you agree with that sir absolutely you know you have hit 
the nail on the head. None of our wars papers have been released to academics. They need not be released to intelligence, but academics. So the 1962 war, we had to read a foreign book, which of course was banned. In the 1965 war, we have not heard much. Papers are not released. 71 war, the official history is what the Navy wrote, what the Army wrote, and what the ministry, not from the papers, but what they were given. Therefore, even in Kargil, the papers are not released. Therefore, you have hit the nail on the head. Of course, in confidentiality, even when I met General Malik, my postmate, when he was army chief, and I said to him, sir, have you read the Henderson Brooks report? He said to me, I have read and there is an abridged edition in the army headquarters. So I said, can someone have a look at it? He said, no. And therefore, even the Henderson Brooks report, the original is not. And now I believe the original is not easily. So I'm not speaking out of turn. I'm speaking that the Indian Navy, even after every collision, and I had a collision of my ship, the lessons learned were taken from me. Because the lessons learned in history, history repeats itself. Crimea is repeating itself in Donbass. Donbass, I feel, will be another Crimea. It will become part of Russia, the way the game is being played out. So thank you, Sangeeta, for asking that question and telling us that if the three forces are together, like it happened in the final stages of Ladakh, the Indian Navy was flying P-8I, the Air Force was flying its fighters, and MiGs 29Ks of the Navy were flown north, the India is a very, very potent force. Thank you for asking that question. Right, sir. Thank you very much, sir. A pleasure to have you on the chat show as always and looking forward to our next interaction. And I now take you back to Chitali, who is in Cyprus waiting for us. Thank you so much, sir. Indeed, very classified information, which uh, most of us didn't know. And you were a part of that operation. So definitely it came from the horse's mouth. Thank you so much for this in informative session. And I'm, I'm hoping and I definitely wish all our audience will enjoy the presentation as well as we did. Thank you so much and have a great day ahead, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.